why why do I believe church leaders should not be women? I mean, we see here that church leaders shouldn't be women. It just says that in the Word of God. But uh, let me just go through a few things on what the Word of God says and why I believe God does not have women uh, to rule the house of God and does not have women to be authority uh, in the house of God. So two things I want to cover. One is, number one, they're, they're all, women are ordained to be a follower and they are ordained to have authority over them. That's just how God has it from the very beginning. Genesis 3.16. After Adam and Eve had, <coughs> had sinned and God pronounced the curse, look at what it says here in verse 16. He says, Unto the woman, Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. So I don't know what it was like before, you know, uh, the Garden of I guess, you know, maybe they were more on equal authority before she sinned. Um, but after Adam and Eve sinned, part of the curse was that the woman's desire would be to her husband and that now she would always have an authority that would rule over them. So if you're a, an unmarried woman, it would be uh, your, your, your father and if you're a married woman, it would be your husband. So it's ordained from the very beginning uh, for women to have authority over them. And not, not only that, but in... Um, in Genesis 1, uh, verse 18. Oh, was it Genesis? Oh, no, that's not Genesis 1. I put the wrong. Um, oh, where was that? Where's that verse where it says, I'll make an help meet for him? Does anyone remember where it was? I'm, I'm blanking right now. Is it chapter 2? Okay, so maybe it was 2. Oh, okay, it's 2.18, so I think I put 1.18. Okay, I've got chapter 1.18 in my notes. It's cha uh, chapter 2.18. Okay, it says here in chapter 2.18, And the Lord said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make and help me for him. So we see there in Genesis 2 verse 18 that the woman, the whole reason why she was created was to be a helper for the man and it wasn't the other way around. One thing I just want to note on this verse is that God said he would make an help meet for Adam, meaning that he would make Adam a helper that was suitable for him. Not that he would make Adam a help meet, because you know a lot of people would call the wife a, a help meet. I don't think that's actually a word. That's just them joining those two words together. But he's saying here, I will make him a help or a helper suitable, um, suitable for him. Uh, Ephesians 5, 22 says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church and he is the saviour of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. So I take that to mean that anything your husband asks you to do, if it's not sinning against God, a wife should obey it, even if it's just a husband's preference. It says that, uh, that they should be subject to them, um, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. So we see there that the husband is the head of the wife. This is how God has ordained it. God has ordained the woman to have authority over her. He's ordained her to be a follower. And why has he done it that way? Uh, let's see in 1 Timothy 2. So there's no question about it that God has ordained uh, women to have authority over them. And that's just how God has done it. And that should be enough for us. If God has ordained it that way, that should just be the way we do it. But let's think about the reasoning why God did it that way. Um, and we read here in 1 Timothy chapter 2, 
Let's just read from verse 11. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. So we read that in Genesis, that Eve was formed to be a helper for Adam and not the other way around. Adam was formed first, then Eve was formed by the, the rib of Adam. Adam was first formed, then Eve. But look, this, this is why I believe God does not have women in authority in the local church. And Adam was not deceived. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. So why do I believe God has appointed man to be the ruler in the house of God? He's, he's appointed man to be authority over the woman. Why? Because I believe God knows because of Eve that there is a tendency for women to be more emotional, to be more driven by their lust, to be more driven by their desires, and that makes them a bit more unstable in terms of holding fast for, to the truth, and they're more easily deceived. The Bible says here in verse 14, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Now, am, am I saying that every woman is more easily deceived than every man? No, but I'm just saying that in general, you know, women are more easily deceived and more carried about with strange doctrines because they are ordained to be a follower. That's part of the curse. They follow people, so they are easily follow men and they get carried about with different things. I mean, how many times have I heard stories of couples that are together, they're not married yet, and, and, a, and a woman, she's a natural follower, right? So she likes this guy and she, you know, she starts to take all his positions, but then when that relationship doesn't work out, then they you know, they get back with their friends or they get back with another guy that has totally different positions and now they're totally changed. Like the positions that they were so solid on before when they were with one guy are now totally different when they're with another guy. And, and to me, that's just an example. It's anecdotal, I know, but it's an example of women easily being tossed to and fro. It is a generalization. It's just that, you know, you can generalize that men are stronger than women. But is every man stronger than every woman? No, because you, you probably... You know, get some woman that has, you know, trained up and whatever that can probably beat any, most men in an arm wrestle. But that's not normal. That's, 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 a, that's an exception. So this is why I believe women are not meant to be in a position of authority because they're easily deceived, more easily deceived. God doesn't want them especially, you know, teaching the Word of God. And that's why the Bible says here, when the teaching is going on in church, that women are to learn in silence. And he doesn't suffer, he doesn't allow women to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Because why? Verse 14, Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Let's just go back to Genesis 3 and just see that time where the woman got deceived in Genesis 3 at the beginning. Let's just read from verse uh, 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And the, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. A couple of things I just want to mention there. So we see that the tree was good for food. She saw that the tree was good for food. So we see the lust of the eyes and that it was uh, pleasant to the eyes. Uh, and, then, and then a tree to be desired to make one wise. So a lot of people say we see that she saw that the tree was good for food. So there's the lust of the flesh and that it was pleasant to the eyes, that the, the lust of the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise. There's the, the pride of life uh, that's mentioned in James. Was it James or John? Maybe it's John. Um, so you see there that the woman was deceived because she was drawn away, you know, I guess emotionally or her desires, right? It led her to, to be deceived by the serpent where Adam was not deceived. You know, Adam ate of the fruit knowing full well that he was sinning against God. And, you know, just one thing I just want to say here is, you know, somebody said, said to me and Elizabeth recently, I'm not going to say who it was, but somebody said to us recently that, you know, the story in Genesis was, you know, Eve, she was like this temptress, 
you know, and, and she, she ate of the fruit of the tree and then she actually, you know, tempted Adam into to eating of the fruit of the tree. I remember when they said this to us, I was like, I don't remember reading that in the Bible, you being this temptress and temp tempting Adam to, to eat of the fruit. Because really that whole story is in one verse. It's, you know, that's here, here it is here. She, she ate of the fruit and gave also to her husband with her and he did eat. I don't remember reading anything about her tempting him. But the reason why that theory or that story, I think, is, is kind of silly is because number one, this is before the fall. Remember they, they were naked? They were always naked. So what's the temptation there? And they were already husband and wife, so they're already sleeping together and, and, and doing what husband and wife does. So, so why would there be any temptation? And you say, well, maybe she was abstaining from Adam. But then this is before sin. And abstaining from your husband is a sin. So is that her first sin? I thought her first sin was eating of the fruit. So there's just many reasons why that story is, is quite silly. But I just think it's funny that, um, that, that that was said to us. I was like, I don't remember seeing that in the Bible. So no, there wasn't this, this temptation of Eve to, to get Adam to eat the fruit. It was Eve that was deceived. Adam was not deceived into eating the fruit. He wasn't tempted into eating the fruit. He ate the fruit knowing full well that he was rebelling against um, God. 1 Corinthians 11 <clears throat> Again, we see here in verse 3, but I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ and the head of the woman is the man and the head of Christ <coughs> is God. Let's jump down to verse 7. For a man indeed not to cover his head for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman. But all things are of God. And you read that verse and you say, is, 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 is Paul just one for tongue twisters? Because, you know, he's got his Romans 7 passages and things that I would, I do not, do not, would, would. And this is like another one. It's like, man is not a woman, woman of the man. And you just you, you start reading through this and you're like, okay, I'm lost. I don't know what Paul is talking about anymore. Um, but let me just explain it to you briefly, a couple, what he's saying here. He's saying here that the man is not of the woman, uh, but the woman of the man. Because he's saying that the woman, I believe, he's talking about creation. The woman was created from the rib of man. And the, it's not that the man was created from, from woman. So that whole Adam was formed first and Eve um, was second. Uh, neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. So remember we talked about the woman being created as a helper for the man and not the other way around. Um, the, the man was not created to assist the, the woman, the woman was created to assist the man. So there's the for the woman, but the woman for the man. Let's jump down to verse 11. Never, nevertheless, so what is he saying here? Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. What I believe he's talking about here is the fact that man is born of woman, right? Neither the woman without the man, saying that both are necessary for a birth to take place. That's what I think it's talking about. So it's saying you can't have another man without the woman because women give birth to children, but a woman can't give birth without the seed of man. So they're both needed. So it's just showing here that, yes, in verse uh, 9 or verse 8 and 9 and 10, it's saying that, yes, women are under authority, but, it's, but they just have different roles. They're not differing in value. They have a different role to play. And that's why he's saying they're both important because you can't have more men without women and you can't have more women without men. They both need each other um, there. Verse 12, for as the woman is of the man, so even so is the man also by the woman in all things. So just reiterating that again. So that's how I understand that passage. A couple of interesting things I just want to mention in this passage that hopefully you find interesting. Number one, in verse 7, it says, For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. Now did you know that man was made in the image of God, but not women. Women were not made in the image of God. So it says here that the man is the image of glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. And I believe that this is a false teaching that people are trying to 
uh, promote, and even the new Bible versions, because they've changed Genesis 1.27 to say something different. But look at what it says in Genesis 1.27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. So what is him? Him is singular. So he created the man in God's image. Male and female created he them. So man was created in God's image because God is a male. And man was created in God's image because men are males. And to be honest, I don't think I would want females to be created in God's image because I, I think I like the way my wife looks and I like the fact that she's created a woman and she's not in the image of God. Um, so man was created in the image of God, uh, not both of them. And you know what's, how this verse has been changed in other Bibles? You can look it up in the NIV. I don't know if it's in other Bibles too. But it says, in the image of God created he them. Male and female created he them. So they've changed that him to them to say that both women and men are created in the image of God. And sometimes that's used to promote, well, they're both in the image of God. Why aren't they both equal? You know? Or they might say, I, I don't know what this religion was that came to my door. But it seems to be popular amongst the Koreans that God is a mother, that God is a woman. And they'll say that there is a woman part of God. And we see here because male and female were created in the image of God. So if a female is created in the image of God, doesn't God then have a female count, a, a female part? And it reminds me of you know, the, the documentary Marching Desire, the Shekinah Gloria. It's like the, the, the female aspect of God. And the, I guess there truly is nothing new under the sun. You know, the Jews, the, 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 what, the, the religion of Judaism is promoting this female side of God, the Shekinah Gloria. Um, but there are other religions out there too trying to feminize God. And I believe that's blasphemous because God is a man. He's our father in heaven. Man is created in God's image, not female and you know the king james bible makes that distinction in genesis 127 the other bibles do not uh, even though in first corinthians 11 the bible still say that the man is created in the image of god and the woman is the glory of the man so they've got a little bit of a contradiction there if man and woman was created in the image of god <coughs> and you know the thought i was having when i was thinking this out you know, the fact that man is created in the image of God and not woman. Um, it made me think of this thing that's going around in the media now of Bruce Jenner. Um, I don't know if you guys know about it, but um, maybe you've seen it on Facebook and things like that. But Bruce Jenner, or now known as um, Caitlyn Jenner, is um, the reason why I was thinking of it is because, you know, man is created in the image of God, but I was thinking, well, maybe Caitlyn Jenner is the only you know, woman that's created in the image of God because he's, he's really a man. But, but if you don't know the story, Bruce Jenner, um, I, I don't even know who he is. I, I, I hear he's some sports star. Uh, was, he, was he like an, an, an NFL player or something like that? He was like, an, I think he was like an American footballer or something like that. He's a sports star. So he's, he's like the, the manliest of men uh, that you can imagine uh, playing sport. But then what did he do? He went and mutilated himself to, turn him, to make himself look like a woman. And now he wants everyone to call him Caitlyn Jenner. Um, and I just think that's, that's really disgusting. But you know, even, even though, you know, I, it doesn't matter how much Bruce, how, much, how many surgeries or how much paint or how much Photoshop that Bruce Jenner does to himself, himself, not herself, because it's a man. I will, ne I will never accept Bruce Jenner as a woman because it doesn't matter how, how much surgery you have and how much body modification you have, he will never turn himself from a man into a woman. Yeah, he, now he's just a, a man that looks like a woman. He's not a woman, uh, just a man that looks like a woman. And you know, that's what homosexuals, that's what they try and do. They just want people to accept them. If you think about the whole gay marriage debate, the gay marriage debate right now isn't even about rights because they, have, they can do all the things that married couples do. The only thing that they don't have is legal acceptance. And that's what they're trying to force onto the Australian people is that the Australian government would recognize their perverted relationship as a marriage. But you know what? You can convince 51% of the Australian population that your perverted relationship is marriage but that's not going to make me accept that perverted relationship as marriage. So it doesn't matter if you convince 51% of Australians 
you're not going to convince me and I just hope that sticks it to them because you know it's kind of like uh, Mordecai not willing to bow I'm not willing to bow because you can convince everybody that what you have there that perverted relationship you can call it whatever you want you can call it marriage I'm not going to accept it as marriage and it's the same with Bruce Jenner he can call himself Caitlyn he can put on a pair of breasts and he can you know put on a skirt and have all that surgery but Bruce Jenner is still a man even if he changes his name uh, to Caitlyn. You know, it's kind of like, you know, buying a bad car. You know, how many of you have tried to buy a car and then you take it, you know, I did it once, I was trying to buy a, a, a I can't remember what it was, some Nissan car. And it looked great on the outside, like it was, it was, you know, it looked new and it looked like it had been taken care of. And then I took it to, to our mechanic and he checked it out, you know, under the bonnet and checked it out underneath and actually looked at the wiring and looked at all the pipes and everything like that. And he said to me, you know, Victor, I recommend you not to buy this car because I know this car has been in, in a major accident because he can tell underneath, I don't know what he saw, but he knew that this car had probably been totaled or written off or had it been in a huge accident and it had just been made to look nice on the outside. And that reminds me of this situation. You know, you can make a man look like a woman on the outside, but that's not, what, that's not gonna change the gender that they were actually uh, born. You know, because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you call it, uh, truth is truth. And it's the same with gay marriage. You know, you can call it marriage, it's not marriage. It's just a perverted relationship of a man and a man or a woman with a woman. Um, and you know, they might say, oh, that's hate, you know, that's bigotry, that's discrimination. I, I just prefer to call it uh, Bible believing. Anyways, a bit of a rabbit trail there. But uh, verse 10, uh, the other thing I just wanted to mention here. So we saw that the man is the head of the woman. Man is created in God's image. Oh, that's how we got on that sort of rabbit trail. Man is created in God's image. Uh, woman is not created in man's image, uh, in God's image. She's created as the glory of the man. I want to just point out verse 10 here. It says, For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Now, there's a bit of dispute over what this verse actually means in terms of the sons of God in Genesis and were they angels that married women and blah, blah, blah. Um, or were they just, uh, you know, unbelieving uh, men that slept with women? You know, I, I was pretty, I was pretty um, set in my ways that it was not angels, but I, I think I'm starting to be convinced the other way. But, um, and maybe I'll touch on that on another time. But what I wanted to get here, you know, there are differing views on what this verse means, but it's interesting there that it says here that the woman should have authority on her head because of the angels. Now, why would a woman need authority on her head because of angels? Well, I believe it's because angels, the demons, you know, uh, the bad angels are out there to deceive, you know, the deceiving spirits. And this is why the woman is meant to have power on her head because, you know, what we mentioned, that a woman is more easily deceived. A woman is more easily drawn away by every wind of doctrine, that that's why she has authority on her head because there are angels out there trying to deceive us. And this is just going back to my first point. This is the reason why women are not meant to be an authority in church. So number one, they're ordained to be a follower. They're ordained to have authority on their head. Why? Because they're more easily deceived. And we see that the nature of women in Genesis. Um, and we see also here in Corinthians that uh, that's why she needs to have authority on her head. Because there is something to be worried about uh, because of the angels and what they do. 